Title Pro 7 is usually applied to the timeline as a generated media event, placed on a track above the video event that the title will overlay. The benefits of this method include being able to modify its length to suit the video event. One disadvantage is the inability to see directly how the generated title interacts with the video event. To do this, it's necessary to switch backwards and forwards between the NLE UI and Title Pro 7's UI throughout the title design process. Applying Title Pro 7 directly to the video event as an effect allows the event to be viewed in Title Pro 7's UI. Changes can then be made to the title's design and the impact of these changes on the event can be seen in real time. The downside of this method is that currently, setting up Title Pro 7 to display the video event as its background can be quite hit and miss. In this video, I'll explain the methodology involved when applying Title Pro 7 as a video effect. Welcome to my 24th tutorial. Okay, here we are in Vegas Pro 18. I have a suitable video event that I've pulled down onto the timeline. And normally to add a title to this video event, I would select Media Generator and pull down the new blue generated event onto the timeline. We'll just go back to the timeline. Ah, I have Auto Ripple on, so I'll take that off. That's how you would normally use a Title Pro 7 generated media event. But what I want to do today is to apply the Title Pro 7 plugin as a video effects. So I will just go back to the Title Pro UI and exit that without saving it. Close this one down, go to the project media and remove that from the project. Delete that track. First I will just point out that the length of the video event is 14 seconds and one frame. I now go to the Video Effects tab, select Favorites, New Blue Title Pro 7, and pull that plugin down onto the event. That will immediately open Title Pro 7's UI. Now a little quirk when using it in this mode is that you get an extra title in the title list. This is a rogue one. It will stay there until you exit Vegas Pro. So we we'll just ignore that top one. This is the one that we're interested in. Now if we look across here at the title length you'll see that it's 14 seconds and one frame the same as the video event in Vegas Pro. Now to get the video event to show as a background we have to go to the view and select background and this is where I hope it works you remember me saying in the introduction that uh, it's a little bit of a hit and miss 
whether this works or not. You select video from NLE and it has worked this time. So we're now displaying the video from Vegas Pro as a background. And I can play that. You will notice when I play this that the video plays and it carries on playing through the pause point. So what you can do is to design your title and see it interacting with the video on the Vegas Pro timeline. Now you'll notice straight away that a little bit of a problem with this. It's not a problem if you want it to work like this, but if I start at the beginning, the title is on straight away at the beginning of the video event. And it carries on playing. Right the way through to the end. Now that's not always what you want. Sometimes you want the title to come on halfway through the event. And just last for a few seconds. To be able to do that, you need to resize the element. I've just resized that and I'll move that along just a bit. Wait till it renders. Now what will happen now is that the title isn't there at the beginning of the clip. It comes in part way through. And then stops before the end. So you adjust the length of this element and the position of it, depending on where you want the title to appear on the video event. If you have any transitions on the element, make sure that the pause point is in a blank area where there's no transitions. That rule still applies here. Now in this situation, all the normal rules apply, just as the pause point rule applies regarding transitions, regarding timeline length, and just to demonstrate something, I will open the, the library's already open. So I, what I will do is go into project templates, go into my lower thirds and pick a suitable template. Now you can see that this template actually fills the timeline. I will open that up a little bit. So we have a timeline of four seconds and nine frames and a title length still of 14 seconds and one frame. Now if I didn't do anything with this at all, It had come in straight away and stay there. For the duration of the event. Now to avoid this happening, because this is such a complex title, I would have to group all these elements together.
and resize it to suit. Now this may or may not work because the pause point is set at a specific point. We'll see how it works. Wait for it to render. It's coming. Ah. So the pause point is set at the wrong part. I need to move that a little bit. Try it again. I think I moved it to the wrong place. So let's move that. Probably the best thing I should do is to ungroup this so I can see what's happening. Ah. That need to be, I think, there. I'll try it again. Mm -hmm. Just not quite right there. I think the problem is these transitions here are causing a problem because if I put the pause point there it will stop the glint there. So you can see that it is a little bit of a problem when there's a complex title in place. Let's just try that. Now, as you can see, that's not working very well at all. But you get the idea. I've just thought of another way of doing this, which might be a better way. So what I'll do is to replace that. Again, is that the one? Yes, that's the one. Replace that again and increase the timeline. If I increase that to say eight second, and look at where the post point is. So that's between those. I can now group all these together well not necessarily group them but select them and move them all and move the post point there And see how that works. So that works. So we have a blank section, the title comes in, pauses for the remainder of the title and then goes out. Okay, only one more thing to do. 
and that is to change this text And there we are. Now you can see that it's an advantage to be able to see directly the effect that changes made to the title design have on the video event that it's describing. Whether this advantage is worth the amount of persuasion you have to apply to Title Pro 7 in order to get it to work, I'll leave that up to you. Until the next time, bye for now.